I fed my indoor worm bins some avocados that were going brown on us. And so let's take a look in the bins just five days later. Now, avocados are actually fruits, not vegetables. And so unlike other fruit, they contain very little sugar. They're mostly fat. Well, they're mostly water, but they have far higher fat than they do sugars. So the worms don't gather in them because of sugars like they would with a watermelon or a pumpkin or anything else that is starchy in a sugary way. So just look at the worms gathering around these avocados. They clearly are drawn to them and they stick around these avocados for a long time. They get interested in them quickly and that interest lasts. Now, this is five days later. Here I am on the second bin. And so when I did some digging into what's in avocados, I find that, oh, look at all those worms. I find that they actually have antimicrobial properties. So that sort of flies in the face of why worms would be attracted to them. Worms eat microbes. So what are these worms doing? Just look at them gathered there. What are they eating if they're not eating the microbes? I decided to look at the life cycle of an avocado for some answers. Avocados used to be far smaller in their wild state. They were so small, in fact, that they, oh, about well, five or six of them would fit in the hand, not just one like I'm showing here with the worms in it. And they were small enough that they could be swallowed whole by animals or even birds. And the animal's gut would digest that uh, leathery skin. It would digest the small amount of flesh around the center stone. And then the animal would, would regurgitate or poop out the stone and deposit it some distance away from the mother tree. Now, obviously, the avocados that are commercially grown now are very fleshy. And so there's something else going on with these avocados as opposed to the avocados that were found in the wild. The worms clearly love that fleshy, moist center, but how do they overcome those antimicrobial properties of the avocado? So I did some digging into the antimicrobial properties of an avocado, and it turns out that the, the pit especially, but even the flesh and the skin, have a potent antifungal called pepsin, this makes avocados toxic to certain animals like rabbits and goats and horses, and luckily not humans, uh, unless you're allergic. But anyway, um, and then the flesh of the avocado has antibacterial. And it turns out that scientists are extracting from avocados and using those antibacterials as alternatives to antibiotics and cancer-fighting agents. In the avocado's natural life cycle, the animals or birds that consume avocados do so before the avocados ripen. In fact, the avocados do not ripen on the tree. They don't start ripening until they are picked. And the antimicrobial properties of the avocado do not start to diminish until the avocado starts to ripen. So the worms and the microbes take advantage of something that we as consumers know very well, that if you bruise an avocado, it goes brown. If you cut an avocado, it goes brown. You expose the flesh and it starts to oxidize. And oxidation causes rotting from the invasion of microbes. So what we are doing is we are doing something different than the native avocados or the wild avocados. Uh, would experience in their uh, typical life cycle. What we are doing is we are allowing the avocados to ripen and get exposed to oxygen when we cut them or get exposed to bruising. And both of these things benefit the worms. When an avocado is bruised, the cell contents get mixed up and jumbled and that turns off the antimicrobial elements of the avocado. When the avocado is cut and exposed to oxygen, oxidation starts, that similarly turns off the antimicrobial 
action of the avocado. It is allowed to ripen in its fullest and therefore the microbes can start to move in, but they can only move in from that flesh that is being bruised or exposed to the oxygen and that's where the worms come in. They eat those microbes exposing more flesh and you see the green flesh there under the worms and the cycle continues. More oxidation, more browning, more worm activity. How exciting is that? Bye for now, everyone.